I'm Jake. And I'm Stephanie. And you're listening to The Fly Angle, the official RDU Airport podcast. All right, guys, welcome back to episode 19. And uh, we have a special co-host with us today, Stephanie Hawke from here in the communications office at RDU. Glad to be here. Appreciate it. Yeah. We're just, always have a good time on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't done an episode in a while and it's good to have you back as always. Why, thank you. Our last episode, if you guys haven't listened to it yet, episode 19 was a doozy. We had three airports represented. If you, some, some folks have been asking for us to have more airport representatives on from different cities around the country. And so we did that in spades. We had Metropolitan Washington Airport Authority represented. That was Amanda Obayashi and, you know, there in Washington, we have Dulles as well as DCA. We also had Stephanie Kitts, who just recently wrapped up her tenure at Albuquerque Airport in New Mexico. Yeah, that was uh, it was a lot of fun. Those are two of my favorite people in aviation. So much fascinating stuff behind the scenes happens in Washington, as you know, huge market up there. Well, it's so interesting always, I think, to talk to people from other airports, because even though we're in the same business, we all go about things a little bit differently. And especially hearing from the communications people and the different creative things that they're doing, it's always a lot of fun. Yeah. And then you go across the country to Albuquerque and hearing some of the innovative things they've tried and been successful with in terms of getting in touch with the community and really being tight knit with New Mexican culture. It was just really fascinating. So if you haven't listened to that episode, would highly encourage you to go back and check it out. It was one of our favorite ones. But all that said, we have a we have an even better one for you today. We have a great interview with Clear. If you're not familiar with Clear, uh, you will be soon. They are coming to RDU, and we're excited to tell you all about it. They launched here at RDU at the end of January. Already a big splash with RDU flyers. But we'll save that for the end of the episode. Stephanie, I have a question for you. Do you have any flights coming up or travel booked? Well, you know, I was just in Florida over Christmas, and maybe it's just the February weather, but I'm thinking a beach sounds really good right now. Yeah. So I was actually thinking about the Bahamas Air Flight in the next couple of months. So Ooh, nice idea. Yeah, a little, you know, a little time on the beach might be in order. I like that. I actually just came back from Florida. Oh, you sure did. Went down right. to uh, went down to uh, see our friends at TPA and headed over to the beach because I, it was a very cold in Raleigh that weekend and I wanted some sun on my face. So I think we stayed in Treasure Island and hung out in St. Pete and close uh, to my old stomping grounds in Orlando. That's right. My and uh, had to go see the flamingo at TPA before oh, I we love left. That flamingo, that's <laughs> great. So I, yeah, I'm actually I've got another trip coming up. I've been kicking around the idea of doing a, a trip over to Europe for some time and just whatever, for whatever reason, haven't had a chance to do it. So we're going to do that in March. And I think we're going to go to the Netherlands and I'm going to try to fly that nonstop to Paris, either there or back oh, or maybe absolutely. both. I don't know. I'm yeah. feeling kind of feeling like it might be a fun time. So sure. That sounds like a great trip. Seth, do you want to kick us off with an airmail question? I sure will. So our airmail question this episode comes from Fahim, who would like to know how RDU goes about getting more aircraft stored at the airport. It's a, kind of an intricate topic. It comes down ultimately to route planning. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it. It's not just the aircraft. It's things like whether the the, air, the aircraft is the correct size for the route they want to fly. And mind you, a lot of this is really the majority of this is happening at the airline level. So airlines employ route planners, uh, route planning specialists. They have consultants. They have a lot of people who they're, it's exclusively their job to focus on the economics of making their 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 network work. So so coming back to that aircraft question, it's whether the planes are the correct size. It's whether they have the maintenance resources and the staff at origin and destination. It's airfield conditions like runway size, uh, whether your your airport has overnight storage ample enough for for that new plane. Right, Steph, you know a little bit about what RDU is building here for that, that the topic. Ron? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We have so many flights that go out early in the morning. I think it's about 30% of our daily flights between five and eight in the morning. And so we have planes just lined up trying to get out and we are building a new uh, parking area for them so that that can uh, ease up a little in the mornings. Right. And so if I'm an airline route planner, I'm kind of following those airport development projects very closely because that 
has a direct tie into what I can and can't do at a particular destination or origin. Yeah, route planning is just truly an art form. These guys are managing a huge fleet in inventory, and uh, you may have seen it in the news, just at the end of 2022, United Airlines made a huge, like the largest wide body order, I believe in aviation history. Um, they're, they're doubling down on Dreamliners, they're doubling down on 777s, they're, um, you know, investing in larger aircraft, that's kind of where you're seeing that trend go of moving to larger aircraft where appropriate. And it's, it's driven by efficiency. Sure. So it's, I always joke about, I wish I could go back to college and take more economics courses. I did pretty poorly in mine. <laughs> yeah, at the time. I, I don't wish that. <laughs> I'm glad there are people who know that. But it's the, it's the most pure real market form of economics you could find, in my opinion, it just Route planning is such a fascinating topic. I wish we, I wish we had more time to talk about it, and maybe we'll have more episodes to talk about it as we go. There's things like mileage, wind, on the ground costs, all that factors in. Um, so, Fahim, great question. We love that. It's a lot more complicated than it sounds, right? Yeah. Steph, let's go ahead and get into uh, some headlines. What do you say? Well, let's do that. You know, February is a really busy month for air service here at RDU. We have Avello launching flights to six different destinations in Florida. That sounds really good right now, as we have just discussed. They are also opening a base here, which means they're going to station an aircraft at RDU. They're going to create as many as 50 jobs and potentially more later on. People who are going to come in and work and be connected to that to that aircraft. That's great. And so we're very, very excited about that. Avello, as, as some of you guys may know, they launched in 2022 at RDU with a single route to New Haven, Connecticut. They And they're operating at a terminal too. So they actually also are going to be simultaneously moving in February over to Terminal 1. So they will be joining Southwest and Spirit. If you are familiar with RDU, you know that historically uh, Terminal 1 has been a, a Southwest terminal. That now has three airlines, including Avello, who is quickly becoming one of our fastest growing uh, startup airlines here at the airport. And of course, we'll be changing signage and getting the word out via the news media and social media about that change because we want to make sure that everybody knows that they will be going to Terminal 1 instead of Terminal 2 if they're taking an Avello flight out. Yep, that's right. We also have Breeze launching. They'll be going to New Orleans, Hartford, and Providence. And Breeze is one of the airlines that came in last year and announced they would be uh, launching service in 2023. We actually had four airlines that either started or announced they would start service here at RDU last year. So it was a big year for expansion for us. So this is going to be really exciting because we're going to be adding new destinations that our guests have not been able to go to nonstop right. before. So I, if this I'm not will mistaken, be a big, they're adding a couple more in May. I think gonna, Jacksonville and Columbus, right? Yeah, they sure are. They're going to go ahead and add some more destinations in May. So a lot of expansion here. And that's that's great, not just for the airport, but of course, for the guests who are trying to fly out and get those direct connections, direct flights. Yeah, it's always a good sign when the airline is investing into even more routes than the initial announcement before they even put wheels down on the airfield. That's, that's right. A, that's a really yeah. exciting. Well, and you know, Avello came in and had the route to Southern Connecticut. And that was um, that was a significant one for us because the Metro New York area is our busiest, most popular uh, destination. So that was something that was really successful. And now they've come in and said, hey, let's go to Florida. And people are saying, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, the new routes on Breeze. So we're really going to have a lot of new destinations here at RDU. So I mentioned Bahamas Air earlier. Let's talk a little bit about international flights. You know, you really can't uh, go around now without seeing billboards and different advertisements for Bahamas Air. So people have really picked up on that flight and enjoyed it. Yeah, that flight has been a, a big success out of the gate for us, for Baham and for the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. uh, their Ministry of Tourism uh, have been uh, amazing to work with. And if you haven't already checked out that route, I would highly encourage it. All of the islands are just you know, especially this time of year, I'm looking out the window as we record this and it's <laughs> raining and very dreary and gray, gray. And, rainy, yeah. and I'm thinking about booking it myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a lot of people here at RDU who decided to take advantage of that, you know, right off the bat as soon as it started. And they have all come back and just raved about it. They have said wonderful things about Freeport and Bahamas Air and the flight. And they have just really, really enjoyed having taken that trip. So let's move on to Iceland Air. That's another international carrier. Uh, they started up last year and they have actually extended their season. So they now are only taking one month off. So they were flying wow. a shorter schedule last year. And that route has done so well that we said, they said, hey, let's go out and fly it for 11 months. And, you know, people are booking it. It's doing really well. And of course, it's, a you know, just a great 
adventure destination and one of those trips that a lot of people have called one of their bucket list trips. Yeah, the the it, and that that expansion of their season has really indicated to me and a lot of people at the airport just the pent up demand. Uh, from leisure, from from leisure, if you want to call it, mm-hmm. uh, for transatlantic connectivity. Uh, you know, historically, obviously, prior to um, prior to Iceland Air's launch, we had London and Paris mm-hmm. uh, going daily. Um, those routes have since been restored, but you've seen Iceland Air operating that 737 continuing to do well and so well that they'll even expand the season. That's a really ringing endorsement for the growth and persistence of air service in Raleigh. So I'm very excited. I want to take that route. I haven't done it yet. A lot of our folks have. They had some pictures from the ring road and of the northern lights that made me pretty jealous. So uh, I have to figure out which I'm going to first, Bahamas paradise or (laughs) adventure exploration up in Iceland. Two very different trips, but definitely worth it. And like you said, a lot of people here at the airport have uh, gone ahead and taken that Iceland trip. Is there a running theme here that people who work here at the airport want to be the first ones to take those new flights? We're the taste testers. <laughs> we We're are. the taste testers right. of transportation. <laughs> I, should, I should always mention tickets for all these flights are now on sale with each of the respective airlines. Just go to their website and you'll be able to find out information on how to get there as quick as you can. Sure. We hope you will. So let's talk now about an NCDOT state of aviation report. So this is done every two years by the Department of Transportation. The newest report published just recently found that RDU contributes more than $17 billion to Central and Eastern North Carolina's economy. It also supports more than 85,000 local and regional jobs. You know, the last time they did this study, I guess it would be about two, three years ago now, the economic impact was $13 billion. So as RDU continues to grow, businesses are growing, we help connect them with their customers, We connect people with the places they want to visit, family and friends. And so that was just a tremendous output uh, to see coming back in that state of uh, Division of Aviation report. That's great. I also read in that report that RDU generates more than 800, I think it's $888 million Mm -hmm. in state and local taxes and something like $5.4 billion in personal income. Uh, Those numbers really jumped out to me. And and Stephanie, maybe you know this, this survey was conducted in the middle of a pandemic. It sure was. So is it reasonable to assume that that the pandemic is factored into the numbers. And so that almost makes them stand out more to me. That's right. You know, when you look at the one that came out three years ago and how strong those numbers were, and then to look at one that was conducted during the pandemic where things were very different at the airport, it really does say something, I think, about the the economic impact that we have. And, you know, the jobs are, are a, um, a significant factor too. We have thousands of jobs here on campus, but, you know, it goes all around the region. We have people who are part of the, uh, the airport business. And we're just really happy that we can uh, bring those people in and they can support RDU. And you know me, I can never let a, a good soundbite about jobs go by without mentioning the uh, your your new favorite homepage, rdu.com slash careers. I thought you were going to make a dad joke. <laughs> I, I still can. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's time. <laughs> yeah. So we were really, really proud of those numbers. And, um, you know, we just think it reflects how uh, the airport is growing along with the economy, along with the region. And it's just something that, that makes us all proud of where we live and where we work. It's one of the most in-demand airport services by RDU Flyers. And as of January 25th, you can now find Clear in both of RDU's terminals. Our guest today is the former CEO of Tough Mudder and now Senior Vice President of Operations for Clear. Colin Laughlin, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, and thanks for having us here at Raleigh Durham International Airport. Well, we enjoyed having you here today, and we know that our uh, travelers are going to enjoy having you as well, because as Jake said, we hear a lot about when we're going to get clear here at RDU. So to start with, Kyle, how did you first get connected with Clear? So longtime Clear member, uh, relatively new Clear team member, uh, a passionate business flyer, and, and spent a number of years in the skies with my former career in sports and entertainment. Uh, had the pleasure of being able to join the Clear team just about a year ago, as much of our growth has accelerated here with travel returning to the skies post pandemic. So while some of our listeners are, are probably familiar with Clear, can you walk us through the service, how it works? Sure. So Clear is an identity company and we're obsessed with the customer experience. For the past 13 years, you know, many people know us as the expedited security access company that you see in now 50 airports around the country. 
With Clear, you'll leave your traditional ID, your passport in your pocket and be able to use your eyes, your fingers, things that are uniquely you uh, and can't be you know, replicated or spoofed to be able to confirm your identity and gain frictionless access to airport security, but also to stadiums and arenas around the country and a growing number of other uses uh, as we expand our digital identity platform. So what drew Clear to RDU and how long has uh, RDU been on your radar? RDU has been uh, a missing piece of our network for quite some time, uh, and it, it truly comes down to our members. I mean, much like you highlighted, one of the highest in-demand amenities here for RDU travelers that you hear, you know, we see all the boarding passes coming through other airports headed to RDU, and one of the things we hear from our members the most is, when will Clear be uh, in Raleigh-Durham? Given the academic center, the research triangle, obviously the growing business community, and the incredible wealth of relocation that you've seen here to Raleigh-Durham you know, over the past few years years, a really strategic and important location for us, our first in North Carolina, uh, and certainly one that you know we're really excited to be here you know, and be a part of this airport community. It's funny, right before we started the, the podcast, Kyle and I were, were joking about how we would see a tweet about anything really, you know, from RDU about any topic, a restaurant or a new flight. And the first response inevitably was, when is clear coming? So <laughs> yeah, excited to finally check that box for sure. I mean, Jake, one of the things here, we serve nine out of 10 of your top destinations here out of RDU. Really? That's amazing. Number yeah, that's your, great to know. You know, your additional supporting destinations. So as your network continues to expand here, yeah. more and more flyers are using clear across the country. Now we to use it here at Raleigh Durham. Well. Having that round trip coverage is, is really nice. Being able to do mm-hmm. it in both your your origin and your destination goes a long way. Sure. And, and you know, as clear was largely a service that I think many people thought was for business travelers and the you know the road warriors in the early days. You know, over the past few years we've seen the incredible growth of families and leisure travelers and sort of that business leisure blended travel now. And people really prioritizing in the post-pandemic world, wanting to have experiences that are predictable, that are friction that don't require lines and wait times and paper. So uh, well-placed to be able to continue to serve that demand. Okay, so I'm sold. I'm ready to, I'm ready to sign up. Sure. What's, Kyle, what's the best way to get started? How do I, how do I get involved with Clear? So one of the best things about Clear is it's quick, it's easy, it takes about five minutes to do. There's no wait time like you see for TSA PreCheck where it can be you know, three to five, sometimes up to 30 days before you're able to actually use it after signing up. And you can do it in the airport right before you travel with the things that you already have in your wallet or in your pocket. So you'll come to the airport uh, here at Raleigh Durham. We have enrollment centers in both terminals one and terminal two. Uh, and using a, your, your existing identity card, so your passport or a or US government issued you know, ID, uh, state driver's license works as well. We're gonna capture your eyes and your fingers, an image of your face you know, will validate that your identity is yours against your ID. And from that point on, you'll be able to use you know, your, your identity to verify in our clear lanes and we'll get you right on your way. So we've had some passengers ask us on social media about the difference between Clear and TSA PreCheck. So how does that work? Can you subscribe to both or do you need to subscribe to both? You certainly can. And I would say that, you know, quite the travel hack for people that do have both. If you think about... We love a good travel hack. Travel (laughs) hacks indeed. So, you know, many of our uh, our Clear members do have both TSA PreCheck and Clear. And Clear is always located in the area where we can give you access to PreCheck screening or standard screening. So never a thing where you have to worry about, you know, inability for both. Really think about TSA PreCheck as the service that helps you after you know, you've made it past the document and identity check portion of screening. You're keeping your laptop in your bag, your you know, liquids in your bag, your shoes, your belt, your jacket on. Clear is expediting the first part of that process you know, and where you know, you're not having to take your ID out, you're not having to wait in line to get up to the TSA podium. We're using your technology, a friendly ambassador is going to greet you and walk you through that process. And using your biometrics, you'll confirm your identity quickly. We bring you right to the podium. And if you have pre-check, you're able to go through quite quickly. So truly the best of both worlds for the traveler that's looking for the fastest experience through security. Clear's creating new jobs at the airport here too, as well. What, What does Clear staff do on site? Where should I go if I'm interested in applying to work? 
for clear. Sure. Well, one of the things that we are the most you know, sort of proud of is the economic impact that we're able to create in airport communities around the country. You know, we have 44 new jobs here at Rock Durham uh, from our clear ambassadors who you'll see in the lanes, you know, greeting you with that friendly smile, signing up new members and helping to facilitate their security experience, you know, up to our local management team here who's you know, helping to guide and shape that team and ensuring security in the airport every day. Uh, and they're part of a nationwide network of 2,700 you know, clear employees that are in our airports seven days a week, 365 days a year. Uh, we are constantly you know, adding and expanding our network, posting new jobs at clearme.com and, you know, uh, and hiring teams locally here as well. And a, a great way to make uh, you know, a strong living wage, being able to work in a great hospitality and security environment in the airport. Well, we have Clear now live in Terminals 1 and 2 here at RDU. If you want to find out more information about it, go to clearme.com. Tom McLaughlin from Clear, thank you for joining us on the pod. Thanks so much, and thanks for having us here at Raleigh Durham. Thank you for being here. Wow, that was a great interview, Steph. It really was. You know, he's so interesting. It's such an interesting company. And the media who came out were just really, really impressed by it. I think they looked at all the technology and the equipment, and it was just kind of a wow moment. So to be able to hear about it more in depth was uh, really exciting as well. Yeah. If you get a chance when you're in the terminals, Terminal 1 and Terminal 2 alike, um, go and check out those kiosks. It's, It's one of the single best ways to really get intimately and immediately familiar with their brand and what they're doing. I found it incredibly intuitive. I'm so glad they're here. And I have no doubt that flyers are going to be feeling the same way based on what we've already heard. But as you, as new flyers start to get familiarized with that brand, the compliment of that TSA pre it's, it's, it's a good day if you're trying to get through expeditiously. Yes, it is. And you know, as we mentioned during the interview, we've had a lot of people uh, who fly through RDU ask for clear. So I think it's exciting for them, but I, I think when people, like you said, get in there and see the technology themselves, I think they're going to want to sign up as well. Too cool. So finally today, submit your airmail questions to us at communications at rdu.com. We're always interested in hearing what you're interested in and in digging up the answers and bringing those to you in our future episodes. And while you're at it, make sure you're following us on Instagram at at FlyRDU or on Twitter and Facebook at at RDU Airport. And while you're at it, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts as well. We love to hear how we're doing and see your feedback on there as well. So with that said, that's episode 20. Take care, guys. Thank you. And thanks for listening. 